Hey guys, I'm going to make a uh, practice routine guide for you guys, starting with a, a general movement guide into um, using like the Uncle Punch events to max value. So first I'll go into um, the movement stuff. So, I'm a fundamentals guy, and you really need to have, like, clean fundamentals if you want to have success sucking. It all comes together once you, like, you know, master the basics. And so, I first want to start with something as simple as, like, uh, learning on how to use different dash dance lanes. If you like the Foxtrot, about, like, um... Four of them get across the stage, right? But you can dash to be uh, cover less distance than a full fox trot, and it's important to be able to like uh, use the full dash distance and be able to like uh, you know make it shorter too on command and be able to mix it up. A lot of people don't actually do this even if they're like mid-level. Another important part is um, crouching stop runs. You can't do it uh, until your fox trot is done. But say you're um, you're tech chasing and um, you're running towards them. And you want to do like a down smash then you want to be able to crouch. Or run, crouch, react to what they do. So, keep those in mind. And next I want to get into like pivots. It's important to be able to like pivot aerials. You can do it like in end game, but practice I sometimes screw it up. Pivot there is a pretty good one. Just because you can like fade back. And you can pivot like at any point in um, the initial fox trot. So you can like be really clean with the with the pivot there by doing the last second, or not not being as clean. Depends. It's pretty um difficult skill to learn. Yeah, like. Dash input the other direction back to neutral. But you know, I'd say it's pretty damn useful. Fort smash. Fort tilt's a pretty tough one. I personally don't use it much. Sometimes it feels control dependent, but um, anyways, pivots are you know, very good. Pivot grabs are good too. Sometimes you have to pivot to get the grab in time. Sometimes you can do like a sick out space when they're approaching you and then just pivot grab them as they come at you. Okay, so. Next, I want to get into um, doing cleaner wave dashes. A lot of people just do this for wave dashing. Just read diagonal down like that. The reality is um, that could be good sometimes, but um, you want to have more horizontal wave dashes. Reason being, you cover more distance by doing that. See, this is like a normal wave dash, but if you do uh, more horizontal, then you cover a lot more distance doing that and I'll show later in Uncle Punch why this is pretty important especially for like tech chasing you want to be able to like dash way dash in quickly get to where you need to be so a lot better than like these crummy wave dashes that people a lot of people still do at the mid level 
Okay. Pop on wavelengths. Big believer in learning um the wavelengths. And there's a lot of like situations you can apply them to also. So let's get into it. Back in the day I used to watch a lot of Sound Spectre videos and he was the king of like wave landing around the stage. Ready? So here. Just a general movement, double jump quickly, horizontal wave line at the right timing. And you can use it to like a uh, quickly grab edge. Steal an edge for someone. Do that. Hit them. Go out there. So very useful to learn this, and it's just good for like flying around the stage too. In general, it's good for general movement, and um, I like getting in the habit of like uh, trying to wave one as you land off the platforms too. Just try to be as clean as possible. Talking um. You really want to maximize the speed as much as possible, you know? You need like a pretty good bag of tricks. You gotta be like fast and crazy usually to uh, win neutral enough. You generally don't win neutral against a lot of the top tiers, so... Being fast and crazy is the way. Yep, you can even do wave line off aerials like that. You know, you get the picture, hopefully. Other stages too. Battlefield, stadium, um, all have the same platform heights. A little hard to do the wave line, but it's all muscle memory. You can also do a slightly diagonal one if you're a lazy like me. But yeah, very strong, especially against people who have to recover low, like Marth. A lot of tricks you can do. You can grab ledge. Just delay a bit by dropping down. Like that. Hit them. If they're coming at a certain angle, just do that. Once again, general movement is also important too. Just have a good flow and speed. Along with shield dropping too, platforms. Okay, edge canceling. Very important for having a quick success succession of moves. Okay, like hit the shield here, and they're back for more pressure. Not quite as um broken as it was back in the day. Most people kind of wait because they know they see coming like that. Stomp whatever, then they'll probably just wait for you to land and hit you. But you can also not commit to doing another move, and just like escape. If you're like an aerial, more aerial guy like me, definitely gotta learn uh, edge canceling. Also, you gotta learn the up B edge cancels too. Falcon's recovery is really bad unless you go high, and um, edge canceling is very important. So, yeah, fundamentals. Another one is two aerials after a short hop. Um, I like this just because uh, it just helps you get in the process of doing moves quickly off the ground, like almost frame perfect. And it can sometimes trick people too. Like no one really expects you to 
do like a short up up air twice like that, for example. Could be a good trick, you know. Trying to up air, jump there, but there you go. That one is for some reason way harder than doing two uppers. So, yep, yeah, I like, that would be my go-to practice routine for beginners and mid-level people. And doesn't matter how good you are, you gotta work on all of those. Just doing that, those um, routines, I feel like my, uh, work on my pivots and all that. Crouching stop runs. I guess another one that some people choose to ignore is the dash back out of crouch. It's like a one or two frame link. One of the 20 GX nerds probably know the answer, but uh, I don't really use it at all. But it's there's definitely a lot of situations where like, damn, if I did that, then um, I get a free punish or escape. It's Cause you know, CCing is like part of the meta for sure, you know, but. Dash back out of the crouch, lets you escape, or if they roll behind you, you can like get a free grab. It's like a whizzy, whizzy staple. I don't really use it, but maybe I should start using it more, you know. Something to practice. If you're trying to be a 20GXer. Or just for a good movement out of a crouch. Okay, so that's that for um, a general practice routine for like movements and I guess some moves as well. And now I'll get into how to use a training mode Uncle Punch to max value. Probably just run through like almost every event match. I'll cancel training. Nothing much to say here besides um, practice using every different move in your arsenal. Practice different timings, different drifts. That's like rule number one. I kind of prefer like also having like a shield to hit on. That's a different event match, but this is like the intro one. Reason being, people can like angle the shields so that um you hit them higher, and you gotta like adjust your timing for L canceling. Just minor things like that, but uh, this is definitely a good starter event match for beginners. Let's dash training. Basically two different ways to do Dash as a uh, Falcon. There's um dropping down. Try to get the perfect ledge stall. I don't think you have to be like you can afford to be a couple frames late, if I'm not mistaken. But nothing wrong with being perfect. Minimize chances of them still on the ledge. Say it's like a Marth. They don't have a jump, they're coming low. And this shit's like gonna destroy them if you do it perfectly. Yeah, aim for the perfects. Second one is hack stash. Wizzy is very good at the hack stash. Basically, you can't hit him. It's like you might as well be fighting a sheik, up being a beast on. Falcon's kind of uh, iffy at the edge. So, a decent wizzy tactic is to was dash a million times until they they get pissed off and let you back, or as a mix-up, you know, whatever. 
Also, just general ledge dashes too. Try to do it out of invincibility and then go for it. A little easier once you grab the edge. Once. Trying to get your good Gulen frames. And if you go to like a stage like Yoshi's, uh, because the stage is slanted, I think you can actually do like invincible moves out of a uh, ledge dash if you're perfect. That's something like TAS 20 GX shit, but uh, I don't really see anyone do it at all. But it's doable, you know. Like if someone, you, someone counter the stage against you, then you can be doing the Fox Falco chic bullshit where invincible moves out of ledge dash. If you master it, I think the slightest part of the stage makes it like happen. But you know, you should aim for as, for as perfection as much as possible. This Falcon's a uh, at a ledge game is pretty crummy if you don't try to uh, be as clean as possible. Okay, yeah, that's definitely something I could work on that I kind of ignore, but. Anyways, combo training, number three. I mostly use this for uh, tech chasing the spaces. And this is where having good wave dashes matter, like slide horizontal, like I talked about earlier. Down and wait DI. The wave dashes are what make it much easier. Goal is to be like by their feet where they land. Jab maybe on reaction. Or you can just crouch. Like Wizzy. 20 GX. On reaction when they don't tech. Or they might get a tech. Yeah, if you're not having a like good uh, day on reading like your text with hard moves like that, then maybe you should just um, have a plan B and just, tech, just grab them over and over. Nothing wrong with that. An aspect that I don't think I practice enough, you know. I'm not really about grabbing someone a million times. I'd rather just win neutral, but. It's really important for spaces, especially nowadays. The punish game is becoming more essential. So yeah, tying it earlier. It's all about the dash, wave dash, dash, wave dash. In. Trying to change this percentage. D-pad? L D-pad? Okay, adjust percents. Important to do this on higher percents too. Some percents are even harder to... Uh, Grab him zero. See, a higher percent you have to do a dash, way dash. So, pretty important. You see a lot of people, uh, I just want to point it out, because I see it all the time when I see uh, beginners to intermediate players, they do like shitty wave dash, and it's like, they make it way harder themselves to cover. If they tech in, it's fine. If they tech away, it could be fine too, but like, say um, they tech in place, then you kind of screw yourself by not uh, having a good wave dash. Okay, attack on shield. It's a pretty good one here. Uh, I wish there was an option to make them angle the shield. But it's still pretty damn good. It really teaches you which moves you can like, uh, how much advantage you have frame wise to like dash back. And 
and learning the drifts on all the moves, stomps, knee. Not quite as good with Nair because he dropped out right away, but. Being Falcon's all about the drifts. Short hop aerials, like it's all about uh, seeing the drift on the sh on the hits. It's low key kind of like a like puff in a way, kind of. You know, stomp is probably the most trickiest move you can do. Most people are used to getting hit on shield with the knee. You know. Stop you can like fade back last second. So, very important practice. Also, you can um, practice some um, shield poking too. It's very difficult, but you get it. It's fucking juicy. There you go. And that's with the full shield. So when someone's shielding like that, they're probably gonna the shield's probably gonna be, gonna be going down to my angle's shield up so that uh you don't have to have like a pixel perfect stomp to get it. But it's very fucking good if you get it. Another tip I have is to uh try ICs too. Because they have two shields, so It's just good to get used to a different timing of hitting two shields. It's good for overall practice. Getting the muscle memory down. As you hit the shield in different ways. And over also obviously good against ICs, because you don't want to fuck up in your shield grabs. Fit match five. Practice CC and um, add a shield counters. Pretty good one here. Maybe she likes to forward salt. So, pretty obvious. Pretty obvious choice. And there is a window to uh, grab him after the whip too, so might just be an ideal state to be in. If you know you're gonna force it, just be in a crouching state. Very 20GX style of play, but it's good. Cause a lot of sheiks like to like walk up and force it like crazy, so crouching for the most part counters that. But if you're too close, they can like up tilt you. Which is way hard to punish. You can grab him in between hits, but it's pretty, pretty tough. Doesn't even look like the uptilt hits if you crouch. It's interesting. Okay. Yep. C scene. Random moves. Some other examples would be like a Marth. That's not perfect, because Mars tend to like to insta forwarder. This one has like a different timing. But say they insta forwarder, then um, CC hit them. Jab. And so forth. It's just good for practicing crouch canceling. Add a shield. Pretty important one. Fox to smash. She's 
just down smash. Note that I can shield the eye away on the first hit. So it only hits you once, and then you get a pretty free hit after a strong hit, if you're quick enough. So, really important versus Peach. Can't be afraid to get hit by a down smash on your shield, just DI away. If it ends up hitting you, like, start DIing up. It's DI up so you only get hit once. Also, as a rule of thumb, moves that hit harder, you gotta wait a little longer before you act out of shield. The game tells you here, frame 4 you can jump out. Or what, what frame you jump out, rather. And, um, weaker moves, um, you can react quicker out of shield. Say you're playing like even like as like a sheik and you're trying to narrow his shield. It's all about uh understanding how hard the move hits you before you try to go for an aerial. Okay, STI training. Fox up there. Think slide the eye and then. Opposite direction, SDI is easy way to escape. I don't even have that many SDI inputs. It's usually not the scenario that you have to deal with though. But it's still something. It's a good general principle. Just slide the AI away. Or behind them, then um... SDI to the left. <laughs> Partial training. A couple tricks with this one. Some people like ducking. That's the Marth tactic. I don't think it's great with Falcon. End game would be a power shield into doing like an aerial right after. It'd be like a pseudo combo. Let's check in. It's all about um, pressing it right before you get hit. And I like to um, use the C stick to help me get the SDI. But you can get a lot more inputs with the uh, regular DI, you know. But usually SDI is good enough, but not always. Ops tech. Holding down in a way and control stick. ACDI down with C stick. L and R the right timing. Yep, down and away. ASDI down on C stick. SL and R. Not used enough by pros. Some of them do though. And it pays off. Okay, grab mass training, low control stick. Yeah, so this is how I uh, mash out of grabs. Basically, I uh, try to get as many inputs with the control stick while pressing L, left hand. With my right finger, I uh, press the right trigger, and um, I have my thumb pressing going over AYX. So, let's go to like FD. Oops. 
so. Yep, try to get a lot of, generally get a lot of good frame inputs. Once again, wiggle control stick. Press L and um, press R with your right finger and um, press A, Y, X. Slide over, slide over three buttons with, with your right thumb. It's really good if you don't want to get <sighs> chain grabbed or wobbled. Lastly, there's um, this event match is worth mentioning too. Exercise. It's generally good for uh. Quick, strong hits, quickly as possible. Doesn't really matter how good you are at stake, it's, it's, it's pretty damn good for consistency, you know? And that's pretty much it for my uh, routine guide. Hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed a pretty general guide. But guide that would help out uh, beginners, intermediates, and um, even if you're like a, a top player, there's still some aspects that people ignore, myself included. So. Hopefully you guys enjoy this guide and thank you guys for watching.